Hi all, welcome to today's YouTube video. Today we're going to talk about how to do quick tours on your mobile native applications. So when I say quick tours, what do I mean by that? So it's about how you can follow certain test strategies to find defects on your mobile applications quickly. So this is how I came up with the topic. In the past four to five years, I've been testing so many different mobile applications, web apps, hybrid apps, native applications, and as and when I was testing these mobile applications, I started seeing patterns in terms of how different testing approaches helped me to find different types of defects. And based on that, I came up with this mind map. So the mind map lists different testing approaches which you can actually follow while during your mobile testing. So let's get into each one of them quickly. So first is interrupt testing. So what do I mean by interrupt testing? So whenever I'm testing my mobile application, I usually ask my colleague to send messages, call the phone, or I ask her to enable notifications so that as and when I'm testing mobile application, I simulate a real life user scenario. And that helps me to find out how the application is reacting with these constant interruptions. So that is something you want to think about. Next, we have keypads. So when you're testing your mobile application, it's really important to know what keypads pop up for the what, what kind of field. So for example, if I'm using a numeric field, and I click on it, it should open up a numeric keypad, which has only numbers. Similarly, if I'm having a zip code field, then I need an alphanumeric keypad. So it's really important to actually get the right keypad for the right field, something you want to think about. Next is Wi-Fi and 4G. This is one of the most overlooked aspect of mobile testing, and I can give you a real life example and tell you why it is really, really important to do this. Say you're doing a mobile uh, banking transaction and you're sending, say, $2,000 to your friend. What happens when you're clicking on send and then you lose Wi-Fi connection? Does the transaction go through completely or the transaction stop? What happens when the connection switch between Wi-Fi and 4G when you were actually doing this transaction? What happens when you were actually taking the train, you don't have Wi-Fi or 4G, and you click on transfer, what happens to the transaction? So it's really important to do this kind of testing when you're using your mobile application. So next we have logs. Logs are really a rich source of information of how your mobile application is reacting underneath the UI. So in Android, you can use the ADB tool, it's called the Android Debugger tool, to get logs. And in iOS, you can use Xcode's instruments and other logging features and monitoring features to actually know what's happening behind the scenes in your mobile application. So next, we have consistency. So when you talk about consistency, there are two things you want to remember. The first thing is data consistency. So is your data consistent across your mobile app, desktop, and tablet? So for example, say I'm using this Fitbit, right? The, if it says 10,000 steps on my Fitbit, the same data should show up on the website, and the same data should show up on my tablet. The data should be consistent across all these three devices. So that's data consistency. Second is UI consistency. Say your company has an Android app and an iOS app. To a certain extent, the functionalities and the UI should be similar because the user should get a consistent experience. So two types of consistency is really important to know when testing your application. Next, we have memory. So when I test my mobile application, say for example I'm using a flight application, I see how much memory the flight application consumes and then I actually compare it 
with my competitors apps to see whether for the same functionality how much memory other apps consume so say my flight application is 150 MB then another competing flight application if it's a 90 MB of memory then that gives you some information about hey for the same features which my application has why is my competitors app lesser memory compared to mine so those kind of comparisons can give you some information something to think about now going to the left side over here we have installation testing so what is installation testing it's really important to see what happens when you delete the app and then install the app or install an app over an, an existing app or install the app or Wi-Fi 4G Bluetooth this is because this is a really common scenario which the users are going to face because they actually pick up updates from the App Store and the Google Play Store and they update it on an existing app right so it's really important to think about those things next we have caching so caching issues are really common issues no matter whether you're testing websites or mobile apps so whenever you visit a website or an app there's information which gets stored on your phone in what is called local storage of your phone and why they do that is say you visit a page the next time you visit the same page instead of the request going to the server it automatically tries to first see whether that information is on your phone and it opens it up for faster response time but when doing this there are a lot of things you want to think about say you're doing a banking transaction you don't want all this information to be stored in your local storage because they could be username passwords and they should be encrypted right and also when you're testing your mobile application in terms of uh, visiting websites and if, you're, if the website has a lot of images those things get stored too and so it's really important to know what getting cash and what's not getting cash so that's something you want to think about next is battery life so one thing I do when testing is I close all the mobile applications except for the one I'm testing on my phone and for a period of three hours I just uh, play something on my uh, app if it's a streaming app or I just leave the app open for a period of three hours and monitor how much battery life is getting consumed just by doing that you can get some information next is the application life cycle so what do I mean by application life cycle it's really important to know what happens when the application comes to the foreground what happens when it goes to the background what happens when you switch from your application to another application what happens when you kill the app and reopen the app what happens when you lock the phone and then unlock the phone and then open the app so your application goes through different life cycles and that's how your user is going to use it so think about that aspect next is end user scenario so it's really important to understand how an end user is going to use your app so as a tester you wear different hats so if, for example what happens if an 18 year old uses your app what happens when a 50 to 60 year old person uses your app what happens if a visually impaired person uses your app so you need to think about all these users and wear different hats when testing your mobile application so really really important to think about all these personalities or personas when testing next is user reviews user reviews are important because they can easily break or make an app or a company so what do I mean by that if your app is really good people give a five star rating and then anyone who actually looks your app looks at your app from the App Store or Google Play Store they see the rating and immediately you know they want to download the app but what happens if you get a one star rating or two star rating you're going to lose a lot of customers and also the customers are giving a lot of reviews and giving information about your apps 
saying, hey, I'm having problems by logging in every time I am on the train or I'm going to access your app on your airplane mode, right? So the users are constantly giving you feedback through user reviews and that is a rich source of information on defects which your application has or features which your application should have and you haven't implemented them yet. So think about it. Then we have performance of mobile applications. So your mobile apps should be fast. So when you navigate between different pages or when you try to exercise some functionalities within your app, it should be really quick in terms of responsiveness. So there are some things you can do to ensure your app has good performance. So one is images. Don't use a lot of dynamic images because that is going to slow down your app. Second thing is number of web service calls. So a lot for every transaction, a request goes to a server and then we get some response back. If there are a lot of web service calls between client and server, that could slow down your application. So those are a couple of things I can immediately think about which could affect performance. So think about those things. And finally, you have storage. So your app shouldn't consume too much storage on your phones because some people are going to download the app on a phone which has really less storage like 16 GB or 8 GB. I don't think they make 18 GB, 8 GB or 16 GB, but just saying, what if the, your, uh, you're going to install the app on a phone with lower memory? What happens if you're going to install the app for a phone with higher memory or a high-end phone? So you want to think about all these scenarios when actually testing your mobile application. So there you go. These are some ideas to do quick tours on your mobile application. Hopefully you find it useful. If you want more information, visit my website at www.rajsubra.com. That is R-A-J-S-U-B-R-A.com. Thanks for listening.